Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the show, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, I do nothing but elder law. The purpose of these shows is to help you and other seniors here in Hudson understand the people and the programs that you should be knowing about. Um, because they could help you as a as a citizen and just like they've helped my friends Frank and Mary. Remember, for those of you who've seen my seminars, the goal of Frank and Mary is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. So the question is, if you're living in Hudson and that's your goal, how do you do that? So uh, often I am joined by my co-host uh, Janice Long, who couldn't make it today, but who always plays the role of finding great guests to bring on and said, oh, I've got a great person you should meet. Her name is Jackie Kapopoulos, who is here. Okay. And thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And, and, and Janice says, you've got to meet this person. She's the chairman of the board of the Friends of the Hudson Seniors. And I said, and, and, of, and of course, that's, among other things, the, the entity that really helps support a lot of the programs at the Senior Center, which is just a really big deal. So I just wanted to start off and ask you about Kind of, how did you end up here? Are you a uh, native? Well, as, I, as I told you, no, I, I, no. I, I married a native, so <laughs> I'm, I'm really, as I mentioned to you, when I'm here, I'm Patty Murphy's husband. I'm like a nobody. Mm. But you've been here for quite a few years now. My husband and I um, moved here 50 years ago, yeah. and we had two homes in Hudson. Yeah. We raised our five children here in Hudson. They yeah. all went to the Hudson schools. Yeah. I worked at the Marlboro Hospital for 30 plus you years. At the as, yeah, I did as yeah, a nurse. I used nurse. to be on the board over there. Oh, that's a great. That's uh, a great place. It's a great hospital. So we could do so, nurse stories we here too. We could do nurse. We, that, we could that, do patient stories. We, do we patient could do a lot stories. of stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, and, and by the now, way, are any of the kids still around, or do they? I have a daughter who lives in Hudson. Yeah. Um, my oldest son Ernie is in North Carolina with his wife, who is a Hudson native. Oh. Uh, her, she was. Um, Debbie Cady, yeah. a big family in Hudson yeah. also, yeah. and uh, three grandchildren there. And then I have a daughter in Hudson yeah. um, who's married with a daughter. Yeah. I have another daughter who's single in Hudson, a son who's single in Hudson. Oh, wow. They and didn't move far. No, they didn't. So, um, oh, that's great. So, so you're not and, leaving. And a son in yeah. um, Leicester. In Leicester. So, so, um, we're not leaving. We're not going right. anywhere. We uh, sold our home about 13 years ago yeah. on John Robinson, yeah. and we moved to the Esplanade, where we hopefully will live happily ever after. And by the way, you were just talking about almost being like an ad for the Esplanade because you're saying you really like. Absolutely, liked... I love it. Um, it's yeah. it's I I believe it is the perfect place for my husband and I because um, it allows us to do some of the other things we wanted to do that we yeah. couldn't do when we owned our own home because of maintenance and um, yard work, things like that. It's yeah. not for everyone. Some people love doing that, but my husband's a golfer and golf is like their golfing time. So. Right, and it's like, why am I wasting my so time doing us, this long? For us, I could it be, was I could be playing golf perfect. right now. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and the reason why I asked that is, I, as I was mentioning before the show, I remember when the place was built. I remember hearing as I, you know, I've spent time, a lot of time in Hudson. I remember hearing from folks, and they're like, oh, this is going to be, it's gonna, too big, it's going to wreck the downtown. And I really believe that that's one of the reasons why the downtown has become so prosperous, mm -hmm. is that it, it, was, it, it was a lot of people, established, you know, folks who, who could just walk downtown. Oh, it's wonderful. And for so many of my clients, I always tell people, like my friends Frank and Mary, you know, you can live in, in your house as long as you're comfortable living in your house, you know. But if you're tired of the snow and you're tired of this other stuff, to be in a building that's elevated, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no stairs, no stairs, right? It's wonderful. It is. Wonderful. It, it really is. And, and as I say, it's not for everyone, right. but it's a, a perfect setting for us. And it's a setting where I feel like if something happened and I couldn't drive, I can always walk you can to get walk. milk right. or to get prescriptions. Right. Um, uh, it, uh, it has the underground parking so they don't have to worry about the elements. 
But anyway, this isn't an advertisement no, for the but, no, what I, but I wanted to mention it. But I did want to mention it. <laughs> Thank you. And you and you are the chair now of the of the. Actually, it's not called chairman. I'm yep. the president of the, the president. Hudson, um, Friends of the Hudson the Senior of the Hudson Center. Seniors. And, and I you, have been. This is my fourth year doing that. So you love the job. It must be the pay. It I must do. Be, oh yeah. Terrific, the, right? Um, you, I, told me, you told me your husband is a permanent, is a my husband is a volunteer. professional volunteer. My yeah. husband volunteers. And, go and golf player. And he right. is um, on the board yeah. of the ARC, the um, yeah. Area Alcohol yeah. Drop-In Center. Yeah. He is on the board at the Esplanade, and um, he's on a board for a company that he previously worked for. So he's, he's very busy. But you've been um, really interested in senior issues, which is how you got... Well, I, yeah. um, I, in my nursing career, I worked in nursing homes. Yeah. Um, and then the last 30 years of my career, I worked at the psychiatric unit at Marlboro Hospital. Granger 3. So, um, yeah. um, actually, Granger 3, yes. Yeah. So, um, when I retired, um, I didn't plan on working part-time anymore, but... Something came up in the town. They needed a summer nurse, so I worked yeah. for um, part time in the summer program oh, that they had yeah. for the kids. So yeah. I did that, and then um, I didn't want to get into any volunteer work right away. I didn't know what suited me. I started doing a few things at the senior center, like um, doing an exercise class, which yeah. happened maybe one or two years into my retirement. Yeah. And from there, I met women who were friends members, and it came to the um, time for the fall fair, which is our major uh, fundraiser of the year. Yeah. And we make and sell apple pies at that fair. So yeah. they said, Jackie, would you help us to do the pies? So I gradually got into volunteer work. And the more I got into the volunteer work, the more I saw a need for more members. The, um, the Friends was incorporated in 1976, so mm -hmm. it's been around for a long time. And as we speak, there are over 900 people who pay dues every year to become to friend. friends of the Hudson Senior Center. And, 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 and the point of the Friends is really to provide a, 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 an, a, a source of, of, of so, of support of, of volunteers support and of the, revenue for the senior center. For the right? senior center. Yeah. So, um, so, so there were we have the 900 yeah. paid dues yeah. um, every year. But when we have a monthly meeting, anywhere, uh, the most we have attending are 12 people. And I understand, you know, people are afraid to get overly involved yeah. and it's going to be too big a commitment. Um, but really, when you get into it, it isn't. And one of the things that I'm really going to try to um, tackle this year is how to get more people to become involved with the Friends. I see. That's a great idea. Um, because they're already paying due. They're paying due. Right. And, and, and they, I, so you know they want to be supporting the, right, the, the, right. the senior center organization. It really being a friend doesn't entail very much at all. As I said, we have our um, our ma major fundraiser once a year. Mm -hmm. We are most of the people who are um, the quilters and the yeah. sewers and the people who are with the different groups that we have. They provide um, the displays, the knitting displays. Yeah. Um, and the other. Um, this is all the, at the fair. All at the fair. Yeah. The other um, major event that we have, it's not a fundraiser, is a senior picnic. And mm -hmm. we get 200 people at our senior picnic every year. And the friends provide the money for that senior pic uh, I see. picnic. I see. And all the friends volunteer and we, um, you know, shop for it. And um, people from um, various companies come in and do the grilling for us. I see. And where does the senior picnic happen? Well, it has happened at the Elks over the years, mm -hmm. but um, we are now um, having it over at Marlboro at the Fish and Game in Marlboro. Yep. We changed our venue last year, and it worked out absolutely beautifully. Everybody was very, very happy with that, it. That's a great location uh -huh. because the, cause it can. it's really outdoor. Mm -hmm. Although it, although it's weather controlled because mm -hmm. you got those roofs and stuff, so mm -hmm. it's a it's a handy place to mm -hmm. have that stuff. 
So I thought some of the things that we 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 are the fundraising group mm -hmm. for to provide aid to the senior center or help um, provide to Janice in the senior center what um, her funds don't provide. Some of the things that we've done is um, we've uh, historically bought the buses for the senior center. Yeah, last that's year a, that's a big deal. That's a big deal, a lot of money. Right. Last year, Janice um, applied for and got um, a grant from Cummings the for a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so she'll get fifty thousand this year, fifty next year. With that money, she's going to buy the bus and anything that's extra. If the bus costs anything over fifty thousand dollars, we will pay that. I see. I the, see. the other thing that we do, we buy all the supplies oh, for the front. By the way, who's going to drive the bus? They have two uh, paid bus drivers. I see. All right, so those are employees of the town. I see. Yep. And the, the, um, the bus is bought by us, but mm -hmm. it's given to the town. I see. All right. Yeah. Yep. So um, That's a big deal. That's, that's a big deal. It's a very big deal because that bus provides transportation um, it goes. It takes people to doctor's office visits. It takes them to grocery shopping. It goes to the Esplanade and other senior residents in the town to, and to people's homes, picks yeah. them up and brings them to the center, to the doctor's office or to shopping, um, wherever they need to go. And that's a huge big deal. Once again, if you're Frank and Mary mm -hmm. and you want to be, and you want to stay involved in the community, mm -hmm. But you really don't want to be driving all the time, mm -hmm. you know. And I, once again, as I tell clients, you know, the older you get, especially if you have some frailty, it's it just becomes high risk. That's right. It's high risk. I mean, we had a good friend, who, um, well, she's now at the uh, at the Highlands in Westboro, mm -hmm. but she lived, and she's actually she's going to be celebrating her 98th birthday. My mm -hmm. wife is organizing the little party um, uh, next month, right? But but she voluntarily, um, you know. But she lived on Plan Ave, so she lived out in the, uh -huh. you know, wh where she really needed a car. Mm -hmm. And and once she once she gave up her car, which she voluntarily gave up because she was just concerned. While she needed the car, she was concerned. You know, her, you know, her reaction time was getting a little bit slower. She didn't want to hurt anybody by mistake. You know, that's so much of the issue. Mm -hmm. But but you have to have if unless you live down unless you live at the Esplanade, or downtown, you need. You need transportation for some basic stuff, mm -hmm. you know, to to get to the store, and then just to get out, mm -hmm. you know, to get so to have that bus is crucial. It is, it is, and you know, one of the things that the um, the center provides, of course, is the meals on wheels. Yeah, you know, yeah. so that people who can't get out to shop can at least get one good meal provided per day. And so, do they try to do they do transportation for that also in order to help people? The senior center has volunteers who transport uh, the food to the different um, homes and and um, um, elderly residences. That's great. Uh -huh. That's great. So we supply um, all the um, the coffee, uh, the cups, the things that the seniors who come to the senior center right. have available to them. Um, you know, on All a daily stuff. basis. Right. So we provide that. Um, we provide assistance for uh, groups, um, the um, Parkinson support group, excellent group. You don't need to have Parkinson's um, to join that group. Yeah. If you have balance problems or any sort of neurological problem, yeah. um, what we did was we funded money to that um, group so that the man who runs the group mm -hmm. can train others in order to go to other senior centers and train and, and help more people. That's true. So, you know, it's it's kind of a giving back um, right. thing. He charged nothing for the group. He charges nothing. He brings water and a snack. He charges nothing. So we made a donation so that he could continue on with his um, with his purpose, and, and and I think that gets really to the to to the essence of the importance of the friends group because you think about fundraising a lot of time just in terms of kind of big things mm -hmm. and big programs, mm -hmm. but it's that stuff. It's it 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 often costs so little mm -hmm. to have the difference between no program and having a program. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the cups and the coffee and the kind of some very basic stuff, right. because the key to the senior center, you got a great senior center. But the point is the programs. The point it's is the, the program, program, and it's to provide the socialization. Right. You know uh, the socialization aspect. 
um, that um, Every once that in a while we have to mean. glance so we make sure we're going <laughs> over time. Um, Be because that, that too, once again, if you're Frank and Mary, or yeah. if Frank has died and you're just Mary, and you got this great, wonderful house that you don't want to move from, mm -hmm. right? And you lived in this neighborhood for years, but many of your neighbors are now gone, right? The people that most share your memories and, and are people who are around your age. Right, right. And the place where they are, or, or can be, if the senior center is at, is the senior center. That's right. That's so right. So you're giving people that ability right. to do that. You know, people play cards there. They watch movies there. Uh, they play Scrabble. They play bingo. Um, there's exercise groups. One point that I want to make today, and mm -hmm. um, again, I'm going to probably try to do a newspaper uh, article, yeah. brief article, is that there is no age requirement for the senior uh, for the friends of the senior center. Anybody can be a friend. Um, you know, I think about newly retired people. You yeah. know, just think about coming and seeing what it's about, and maybe writing your name and address down so um, that you're willing to be called on if we might need help or if we right. might need more membership to discuss something that we want to do with the center and right. we want input from people. And that really is an ad, yeah. it's really and it's really important because seniors kind of do need to be helping seniors. That's right, you know, that, that's, that's right. That's really, right. really, really You know, crucial. the average age of the seniors that are showing up for our meetings now are um, in their mid to late 70s into their mid 80s. And we need new blood, right. you know? We need younger and people. We, we need some younger people. And by, when I say younger people, people in their 50s, um, 60s. People younger than us. Just to come and, con and contribute yep. some ideas. And right. You know? and, and, but, and that's the future. And mm -hmm. that's the future. And there are just a ton of us, mm -hmm. right? And those folks that need to be helping each other together. That's right. So listen, thank you very much You're for welcome. doing this. You're welcome. Thank I'm you for so, I'm me. so glad that Janice was able to get you to volunteer. Okay. We're now going to take a short, what normally in commercial TV is a commercial break, and I'm going I'm to come back and talk to uh, Doug Peck, who's going to talk to you about kind of where Pleasantries has gone, um, and also about us, among other, what's called Seniors Helping Seniors. Right. So thank you so much. All right. Thank and you, we'll, Arthur. And, we'll, and I hope to have you back here again soon. All right. And thank you Janice very I much for role. asking me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, and uh, welcome back to Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Uh, my name is Art Bergeron. And uh, for the second part of our show, I wanted you to meet uh, a person that you may not know, but you should know. His name is Doug Peck, and and he has worked for quite a few years now with a group called um, the uh, Seniors Helping Seniors. And I wanted to talk about that, and I also wanted to talk about the fact that 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 the group that 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 has Seniors uh, Helping Seniors has also recently acquired and is now uh, running mm -hmm. Pleasantries, mm -hmm. which many folks here have known about. The the, the terrific all day, adult day, social day program uh, that's located right over the line in uh, Marlborough. So Doug, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. So can you start off by just talking a little bit about seniors helping seniors and about yourself? I know you live far away, right? Sure, I live in South, South Borough. Borough. Right, not too uh, far oh, away. Oh, 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 that's a long I lived there for almost uh, 40 years, a little for, over 40 for years. For a long time. Actually, yes. But you you were involved for a number of years in Seniors Helping Seniors. I was. So talk a little bit about that organization, mm -hmm. which always fascinated mm -hmm. me. Right? It was something that um, I, I wasn't really set out to looking to work with seniors yeah. when I, I never really retired, but when I was changing jobs and things yeah. were shifting around. Yeah. Nobody uh, retires. Nobody retires. If it's not work, it's right. not retirement. Okay. <laughs> you like what you're and doing. I love what I do. Right. My father had passed away, and I was helping take care of my mother who lived in Ashland. Yeah. And it was just getting crazier. I'm trying to work full time and take care of her. And yeah. I said, there's got to be a better way. And then... I found this organization. Uh, it's actually based in Reading, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, called Seniors Helping Seniors. Yeah. And what it does is it, it, is it hires local seniors mm -hmm. to help those other seniors in their town uh, that need some help, they, whether it's driving, grocery shopping, making doctor's appointments, anything that's sort of non-medical. Right. And we don't do a lot of personal care because it just makes sense. If they're, they're close in age, their memories, the seniors, are more back in the 50s and the 40s and the early right. 60s, not what's happening now. And so to have somebody who's gone through all that 
just makes it much more sociable. Right. That when you say Tommy Dorsey, they're not like what? Right. Or yeah. Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> or where were you when Kennedy was shot? Everybody knows, you know. Yes. And not that yes. they were. Well, I was born twenty years later, you know. So. Yes. It, it, because. I know my the, wife always dies right. when she's talking. She's she works. She's a teacher's aide oh, yeah. here in Hudson, and she and tip often that's the that's the measure. That's is the measure. To, you know, where were you when Kennedy was shot? Right. And of course. Many, for many of those teachers, they were like 20 years from being born. Right. You know, it, it, so it's true. Yeah, it's you, true. It, 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 it defines kind of the, the, the stories that, that made your life. Mm -hmm. And what happens anyway is it's hard for uh, an older person sometimes to accept people into their home because we do a lot of work in people's homes. Right. But if you have somebody that's coming that, you know, after a while you feel is a real friend or like a neighbor that you've known a long time, it's much more comfortable. You're right. coming out of a a hospital or rehab situation, yeah. you're coming home. You, the nurses are always going to be coming in, but you need someone that's going to help you make dinner, help you make breakfast. Do the Get basic the right stuff. groceries there. Do right. the basic stuff. Even that's help right. you change the bed. If you're using a walker, you can't change the bed by yourself. It's very difficult. But if someone who's looking more like you or looking like a friend that you've had at church or something, it's right. just much less, much less anxiety for that person. Because the biggest issue, but for particular people in the suburbs, is social isolation and and loneliness, quite frankly. Right, because you're because you're, you're in a neighborhood, in a neighborhood, and the houses often aren't really close together. Right, and even if they are fairly close together, you grew up with a set of people who are now not there. Now not there. For many, you know, many people who grew up in a lot of the subdivisions that right. were here in Hudson. Right, the lady that we were just talking to who yep. moved here mm -hmm. and bought new mm -hmm. in in the in the the development near near um, Fort Meadow Reservoir. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And, and, but and there, but there aren't many people there now, right now, who bought new in the 1960s. Right. Right. They go to live with their children. They go to live in a, a 55 over communities right. or uh, assisted living or independent living situations. Right. So you lose your social network. And so those neighbors aren't just going to stop by. So to have right. somebody who's actually going to be able to stop by. Stop right. by. It's that, it's just really a great thing. I've seen so many uh, really close friendships develop from this. And, and by the way, you had mentioned kind of early on, so these are people that you're hiring in order to do this. Yes. So this isn't volunteer work. It's not volunteer work. Right. Uh, it's and, and it's people, all part-time work. Yep. Almost almost everybody who works for us is part-time. Yeah. Anywhere between, I would say, six to eight hours a week. Yeah. Some work as much as 30 hours a week, yep. depending on their situation. And these are W-2 employees. These w are not 1099 employees. employees right. right. All the taxes are paid. They're covered by business insurance. They're covered by workers' comp insurance. So, you know, they're, they're, very, they're very well protected and safe. And we do a fair amount of training for them as well. Yeah. And if I were one of those people mm -hmm. who, were, who had decided that I wanted to do this and I, was, and I were working for you. Right. And I, and I wanted to, emphasize, to do this because I know when we were talking about your being on this show, you were, mm -hmm. you were mentioning to me, we've got a lot of people that want to have the care. Yes. What we don't have are enough employees to be able to cover all of these folks. So you're really trying to find folks. We're right? really trying to right. find folks to, to so, work with us. So if, so if I were doing this and I wanted to do it and I were living in Hudson, mm -hmm. say, would I have the, the ability if you told me, oh, we've got somebody in Everett or we've got somebody mm -hmm. far away to just say, no, I don't want to do this. Absolutely. And to say, I just want to be working kind of in my, in my area. Absolutely. We want this to be a good experience for everybody. If it's not a good experience for the employees, if they don't look forward to it, if they you know, have to drive an hour for a three-hour assignment, they're not going to go. They're right. not going to be happy. Right. So we want to keep people close and work within their schedule. Because what we'll try to do is find you a client who you'll be going to on a regular basis. You'll know what the hours are, so right. it's very predictable. Right. And you'll go and really establish a nice relationship with that person. That's, that's, and this is why I, w I was excited when, you, when I first met you talking about yes. this program. Now tell me a little bit about... Mm -hmm. What's going on at Pleasant Trees now? Because mm -hmm. I know many people know Pleasant Trees because it was, it, you know, Tammy Pazuricki had set right. this up a long time ago, like mm -hmm. about 20 years ago now. I remember being her lawyer when she mm -hmm. was setting it up. Right. The question was, what's the zoning? Is this allowed? And we, and, and, and the, the, and they were so welcoming there, the, the building commissioner, mm -hmm. because they really wanted this. Right. right. So, so tell us about what, you know, what's happening at Pleasant Trees mm -hmm. now, what Pleasant Trees is about for folks who don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of how they could know more about it, mm -hmm. right? And by the way, one of the things we'll try to do in this is, is do a banner okay. for, for this show so yeah. that people, if, if they want to call either for Seniors Helping Seniors, seniors or, or for Pleasant Pleasantries, right. that they'll know how to reach you, right. okay? So Pleasantries is a, what we call a social model yeah. adult day health pro, uh, service. Yeah. And 
we deal with people in various but early stages of dementia of one form or another. Mm -hmm. And so they come and spend, and spend usually six to eight hours there uh, at least two times a week. So this is really a full day program. It's a full day program. You come, and folks drop will the show person up, off. Drop and the, then, about what time? Um, we start, I believe, at 8 o'clock. We yeah. go to about 8 to 4. Yeah. And so it's a full day. Full day. Uh, we are, one of the things that we're doing is we have a lot of activities there. We have a music therapist that comes in once a month. Yeah. Uh, we, we, are, we are working with a number of intergenerational programs with Marlboro uh, High School because yeah. they're only right down the street. Oh. We're going to be doing some work with Asabet. High school, the kids from there. When because you say intergenerational, right like for for example, what are you what are you thinking about in terms of those programs? Um, they we actually had our, our holiday party there, yeah, and we had a chamber group from Marlboro High School oh, come uh, over. That's great. And it was it was all in string instruments. Yeah, they played for about an hour there. They were wonderful. Everybody really really appreciate that. That's great. People come over like that, and uh, I they suppose come over that... and do some reading. They can do, there's a lot of things that they that they're able to do right. because they, a lot of them, again, with the families that are spread out all over the place, don't necessarily have close grandparents. Right. And this is a nice way to introduce them to other folks who- And then to connect. Connect, need a little bit of help, yeah. but also hear the stories of these people because they all have wonderful stories to tell. Yeah. And it's just a really good relationship. That's great. And now that you, now that you mentioned it, I know that one of the things, I mean, one of the amazing things about Asabet. Mm -hmm. It was the first school, yes. the first um, uh, um, vocational technical school that mm -hmm. set out to become a dementia-friendly school right. so that all of their, you know, the, 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 the beauticians, mm -hmm. the car mechanics, everybody is being trained now in, mm -hmm. in how to deal or help work with folks who have got some dementia issues, right? And you've got that nursing program right. there that is Absolutely. just- once again, it wants to be dementia friendly, so it's mm -hmm. kind of a natural it's connection a natural for thing. you. Just That's like terrific. Pleasantries was a natural for us. Right. We do a lot of work with people who want to stay in their homes, and we do a lot of work with people in assisted livings, et cetera. This gives us more of a continuum of care. Right. If, you know, if people don't, they want to use us a day or two in their homes, but they also want to have them off for a whole day at a program, it's pr more honestly more affordable than paying our hourly rate for uh, eight hour full time right. thing, and right. they get the socialization. They get to be with uh, anywhere between 10 and 12 others of similar cognitive ability. Uh, they have lunch together, they help make lunch together, they bake. There's, there's, it's very activity driven. We've been very committed to folks with dementia. Uh, our owner, Jess Obeter, was a chairman of the Boston Alzheimer's Walk this year, mm -hmm. it was one of the most successful walks in the country. Mm -hmm. um, we do, uh, he and a number of other people are trained in what's called habilitation training. Yeah. We train all of our people. Which in, was developed that, by the Alzheimer's Association. Which was developed right. by the Alzheimer's Association. Right. Uh, Tammy actually trained 20 of our folks in, uh, sort of as a certified dementia practitioner, sort of another level up yep. from that. So we're very committed to that. We really uh, see the need for somebody to work with people with the, with dementia, particularly at the early and mid stages. And when I, and when I heard that, jo that Josh had acquired the business, I said to myself, while, while I was sorry to see Tammy go, because just Tammy's so right. wonderful, but what a natural fit to have, uh, to, to, you know, to, be, to be A, mm -hmm. looking for folks, seniors helping seniors mm -hmm. who can be helping folks in the home, right. but also B, providing this option for people who are at home who right. may want to participate in a full day program. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, as, 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 we dis, as we talked about it, you know, if you've got some memory loss issues and you're dealing with all people who don't, mm -hmm. well, it's kind of an embarrassment. Right. But if everybody in the room's got memory loss right. issues, then it's just a joke. It's it, like, because it nobody can remember right. where, exactly <laughs> what. So it, it, right. it, 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 it just, because that's the goal of life. The it goal is. of life is not to necessarily have a great memory. The right. goal of life is to have a great day. I always remember my brother-in-law mm -hmm. who was at Pleasantries uh, my, um, and my sister would, would, would drive him every day. Um, and, and, and one day, he, she remembers, she picked him up from Pleasantries. She said, Ralph, so, so how was your day today? Oh, I had a great, great day. day. Yeah. What, well, what did you do? 
I have no idea. <laughs> but that's the point. That's right. Yes. The question isn't what did you do today. Right. The question is how you're doing. Right. How you doing? Right. And it's a, it's it's a, a wonderful thing. So, Doug, thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. I think the, I hopefully as a result of this, mm -hmm. you can find more people who are, who want to be working with seniors helping right. seniors, and that's why we want to have a banner, but also to introduce people. If you if you if you are interested in pleasantries, you yes. should go stop over. Right. You should stop over. Right. Don't assume that this wouldn't be of, of use to you if you have memory issues or if you're caring for someone who has memory issues. It's a very issues. comfortable environment. It's a single yeah. house. It, it feels very home-like. So we've redecorated inside. It really, really looks uh, nice. So listen, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next month on the next installment of Frank and Mary in Hudson. Thank Thanks. you.